And next question, Niter is asking, is the current plan to move the graphical client to Net9 via multi-process architecture before move to source? Yes. Um, let me actually get up for this one. Uh, I'm going to move over here. Grab my brush. There we go. So right now, oh, a little bit more. So the way like the situation is right now. Oops. So imagine this is unity. I'm actually going to write it here. Unity. And this is uh, within the unity, we have Frux engine. So this is Frux engine. I'm just going to Frux and um, so Unity, you know, it has its own stuff. It's just, you know, like whatever Unity has. And then with Frux Engine, most things in Frux Engine, they're actually fully contained, you know, within Frux Engine. So there's like lots of systems I'm just gonna throw them as little boxes. And they're kind of like, you know, fully contained. Unity has no idea that they even exist. Uh, but then there's, right now there's two systems, uh, which are sort of shared between the two. Um, there's a particle system, and then there's the audio system. So those two systems, uh, they're essentially a hybrid, where Frux Engine does some work and Unity does some work, and they're very kind of intertwined. There's another part, when Frux Engine communicates with uh, Unity, there's, you know, other bits. There's also, like, lots of, like, you know, little kind of connections between things that kind of, you know, tie the two together. Um, and the problem is, Unity uses something called Mono, which is a runtime. It's also actually like a VM, you know, like the Protoflex VM, but different. But essentially, it's responsible for taking our code and running it, you know, translating into instructions for your CPU, providing, you know, all the, um, like, kind of base library, like, you know, um, implementations and so on. And the problem is, the version that Unity uses, it's very old and it's very slow. And because, like, all of the Frux engine is kind of running inside of it, um, that makes it, uh, you know, that makes all of this, like, slow as well. So what a plan is in order, you know, to get a big, big performance update is uh, first we need to like simplify, you know, we need to disentangle the few bits of Frux Engine from Unity as much as possible. Uh, the part I've been working on, you know, um, is the particle system. Uh, that one's very close. I think we'll probably start it, like, probably start this thing next week. Uh, it's called Photon Dust. That's our new in-house particle system. And the reason we're doing it is so we can actually, you know, take this whole bit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I, might, I might just redraw it. I wanted to make a nice visual part, but uh, it's not cooperating. I'm just gonna do this. And then I'll do this. And just, you know, particle system, audio system. So what we do, we essentially replace this with this. We make it fully contained inside of Frux Engine. Uh, once that is done, we're going to do the same for Audio Engine. So it's going to be also fully contained here, which means we don't have, you know, ties here. And then this part, instead of like, you know, lots of little kind of like wires, we're going to rework this. So all the communication uh, with Unity happens via like a very nicely defined sort of package where it like, you know, sends the data and like then the system, you know, it'll do like, you know, whatever here. But the tie to Unity is now, you know, greatly simplified. It essentially sends all the stuff, you know, that needs to be rendered, you know, and some stuff that kind of needs to come back is sent over a very well-defined interface that can be um, communicated over, you know, some kind of like inter-process communication mechanism. Probably combination of like, um, uh, a shared memory and some like, you know, pipe mechanism. Once this is done, what we'll be able to do, we could actually take Frux Engine and take this whole thing out. If I, I can't even grab the whole thing, it's 
being unwieldy. Uh, just just pretend this is smoother than it is. <laughs> They'll take it out into its own process. And because we now control that process, instead of you know having being abandoned with unity, we can use net nine. And this part, like this is majority of like you know where time is spent running, except you know when it comes to rendering, which is unity part. Which means because we'll be able to run with net nine, um, we'll get a huge performance boost. And the way we know we're gonna get like you know significant performance boost is because we've already done this for our headless client. That was the first part, you know, of this performance work is move the headless client to use .NET 8, which now is .NET 9 because they released a new version. Um, the reason we wanted to do headless first is because headless already exists outside of Unity. It's not tied to it. So it was much easier to do this for headless, you know, than doing this for a graphical client. And headless, it pretty much shares most of this. Most of the code that's like, you know, doing the heavy processing is in the headless, same as, you know, on the graphical client. Uh, when we made the switch and we had community start hosting events with the .NET 8 headless, we noticed a huge performance boost. There's been like sessions, like uh, for example, the uh, Grand Oasis karaoke. Um, I remember like they, they used to, their headless used to struggle when it was getting around, you know, 25 people and the FPS of the headless would be dropping down and you know, the session would be degrading. With the .NET 8, They've been able to host session which had, uh, I think at the peak, like 44 users. And all the users, all of their IK, you know, things that like, all the dynamic bolts, all the, you know, protoflux, everything, you know, that's being computed on graphical client, it was being computed on headless, minus obviously, you know, rendering stuff. And the headless was able to maintain 60 frames per second with 44 users, which, um, you know, that's, at least like an order of magnitude kind of improvement over, you know, running with mono. Um, so doing it for headless first, that sort of let us, you know, gauge how much of a performance improvement will this switch make and whether it's worth it, you know, do the separation as early as possible. And based on the data, like, it's pretty much like, you know, I feel like it's very, very worth it. And that's why we've been kind of, you know, focusing on making this happen, making, you know, this pull, like, you know, do this kind of thing where you can pull Flux Engine out of Unity, run it with that 9, and then the communication, you know, will just do, instead of, like, you know, the communication happening within the process, it's gonna pretty much happen the same way, except across, you know, process boundary. The other benefit of this uh, is, you know, how do we align this, you know, because we still, even when we do this, once we reach this point, we'll still want to get rid of Unity for a number of reasons. Um, one of those is, you know, being like custom shaders. We, those are really, really difficult to do with Unity, at least, you know, making them like real time and making them, you know, support like backwards compatibility, making sure the content doesn't break, stuff like that. Um, being able to use more efficient rendering methods, like instead of, you know, having to rely on deferred, um, we'll be able to, like, you know, use, like, cluster forward, which can handle, you know, lots of different shaders with lots of light. So we'll want to get rid of Unity as well, and this whole thing where the communication between Fruits Engine, which does, you know, all the kind of computations, and then sends stuff, be like, please render this stuff for me. Um, because this process makes this a lot more defined, we can essentially take the whole unity, just kind of eat it away, and then we'll plug in source instead. So source is going to have like you know its own things, and inside like source is actually going to be like you know right now it's being built on the bevy like rendering engine. So I'm just going to put it there, and the communication is going to happen pretty much the same way. You know, and this is going to do whatever. So we can, we can you know, snip Unity out and replace it with source. There's probably going to be you know, some minor modifications to this, how it kind of communicates, so we can kind of build around the new features of source and so on. But the principle of it, 
by moving fluxation out, by make, making everything neatly combined, making a neat you know, communication method, it makes the switch to source much easier as well as the next step. Um, it's actually the latest thing from development of source. There was actually a decision made that uh, source is probably not going to have any C sharp parts at all. Uh, it's going to be purely REST based, which means like it doesn't even need to. Um, it doesn't need so like you know worry about Net9 or like you know C sharp interop because uh, its responsibility is going to be you know rendering whatever for extension sends it. And there may be, you know, sending some, like, call, like, methods kind of back, like, where it needs to be bidirectional communication to, like, you know, sync stuff up. Um, but all the, like, you know, actual, word mo like, the word model, you know, all the kind of, like, all the, like, you know, interaction that's going to be fully contained in Fruits Engine external to source. Um, then on itself, that's going to be a big upgrade, uh, because it's going to be much more modern than Red Engine would be able to do, you know, things like the custom shaders, like I was mentioning. There's some potential benefits to this as well because it um, the multi-process architecture uh, it's inspired by you know Chrome and Firefox which do the same thing uh, where your web browser is actually running you know multiple processes. Um, one of the benefits that adds is you know sandboxing because um, once this is kind of done, we'll probably do the big move like this, and at some point later in the future we'll split this even into more processes. So each of the worlds you host, you know, can be its own process. Also net nine, you know, or whatever the net version is. So this can be like, you know, one world, this can be another world. And these will, you know, communicate with this. And this will communicate with this. And the benefit is like, you know, if a world crashes, it's not gonna bring the entire thing down. It's the same thing, you know, in a web browser. If you ever if you ever had your browser tab crash, this is kind of similar principle. It crashes just the tab instead of crashing the whole thing. Similar thing, we might be able to, I'm not promising this right now, but we might be able to design this in a way where if the renderer crashes, we'll just relaunch it. You'll still stay in the world that you're in. Your visuals are just gonna, you know, go away for a bit and then gonna come back. So we can like, you know, reboot this whole part without bringing this whole thing down. And of course, if this part comes down, you know, then it's over, but, and you have to restart. Uh, but by splitting into more modules, you kind of, you know, you essentially eliminate the possibility of crashing because this part will eventually be doing relatively little. It's just going to be, you know, coordinating the different processes. But for the for the first part, we're just going to move, you know, for extension into a separate process out of Unity. That's going to give us big benefit thanks to Net9. Um, there's also other benefits because, for example, Unity's, Unity's garbage collector is very slow. Uh, and very CPU heavy. With Net9, it has way more performant one as well. We'll be able to utilize, you know, new performance benefits of like Net9, like in the code itself, because it will be able to start, you know, using new functions within Fruits Engine. Because now it like, you know, we now we don't have to worry about what Unity supports. Um, following that, uh, the next big step is probably gonna be switch to source. So we're gonna, you know, replace Unity with source. And at some point in the future we'll do like more splitting. Um, you know, for fruit engine into more separate processes to improve stability and also add sandboxing because once you kind of do this, you can sandbox this whole process using, you know, the operating system sandboxing primitives, which will improve security. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, the general kind of overall plan, what you want to do, you know, with the architecture of the whole system. And it's been like heavily, like, I've been like reading a lot, you know, how Chrome and Firefox did it. And Firefox actually did a similar thing where they used to be like a monolithic process. And then they started like, you know, doing work to break it down into less processes. And eventually did, you know, just two processes and then they kind of broke it down into even more. And we're essentially going to be doing similar thing there. So... I hope this uh, this kind of you know, answers it. Uh, gives you a better idea of what we want to do with performance, uh, you know, for uh, for Resonite, and what you know what what are the major steps uh, that we need to take, and also explains why we are actually reworking you know the particle system and audio system, because on the surface it might seem you know there's like why are we reworking the particle and audio system when we want you know more performance. Um, and the reason is, you know, just so we can kind of show them fully into Fruits Engine, make them kind of mostly independent, like, you know, of Unity, and then we can pull Fruits Engine out. 
and that's the major reason we're doing it. The other part is, you know, so we have our own system that we kind of control. Because once we also switch Unity for Source, if the particle system was still in Unity, Source would have to re-implement re it, and it would also complicate this whole part. Because like, you no, know, now we have to like synchronize this particle system with all the details of the particle system on this end. Um, so that's, that's another benefit. Uh, but there's also some actual performance benefit even just from the new particle system, uh, because uh, the new particle system is designed to be asynchronous, which means if you do something really heavy, you're only going to see the particle system lag, and you will not lag as much, because um, the particle system, if it's not, if it, if it doesn't finish its computations within you know a specific time, it's just going to skip and you know render the previous state, and the particle system itself will lag, but you will not lag as much, so that should uh, help improve your overall frame rate as well. So. That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, the particle system is almost done. Um, we'll probably, you know, start testing like this upcoming week. Uh, the audio system that's going to be the next thing. After that is going to be, you know, the interface with Unity. Once that is done, then the pool happens into the separate process, which is going to be a relatively simple process at that point because every everything everything will be in place, you know, for that pull out from Unity to happen. So, hopefully this kind of, you know, uh, gives you a much better idea. And if you have, like, any questions about it, you know, feel free to ask. We're always happy to kind of clarify how this is going to work. Uh, I'm going to go big. So, there was, an, there was another of those kind of rabbit hole questions. I kind of did this explanation on my first episode, but uh, the I kind of wanted to do it because I have, like, a little bit better setup, you know, with the writing. So, you can make, like, also, like, a clip out of it so people, so we have something to refer people to.